people this is andy hi we're a little late but we're here and we're ready to go and i've got some amazing guests and we had a little technical challenges but we are starting now and we are going to talk with our alb1 amazon workers that and they're going to tell us what's going on some of the things in the warehouse that they're experiencing so i wanted to welcome vanessa i wanted to welcome shy and i wanted to welcome heather all right so here we are um so to set this up a little bit um i've been talking with heather well first of all i've been following heather heather is an employee and an advocate at alb1 um and i've been following her on TikTok for quite a while really since i think she started organizing to try to unionize the store uh, to, to unionize the warehouse and um, since then, a lot's happened. Um, we connected last week or, or earlier in the week and had a long conversation. And she said, there's a bunch of stuff you should know about. And I'd love to come on and, and tell your audience. And I said, well, that sounds awesome. So she's bringing so, so, some people from the warehouse. And I'm really excited to have them here. Um, I'm going to let each one of you introduce yourselves. And I'm literally going to turn the floor over, over to you. We want to hear from the workers. We want to hear what's happening in the store, in the warehouses and stores. I'm, I've got a, a different industry mentality in my head. Um, there is Amazon Heather, stores, uh, though, so you're not wrong. Yes, yes. Uh, so, Heather, can you please set up a, a little of this a little better than me? I'm a little tongue-tied. <laughs> I apologize. That's but, okay. Um, sure. Please. So, as you said, my name is Heather Goodall. And tonight I am joined by two women of ALB1, two experienced a relationship at Amazon with two very, very different outcomes. And I'm very excited to talk to both of these women about their experiences, but also we're going to touch on a topic I think that impacts not only Amazon workers, which is um, you know very important to touch on, but also across America. The second relationship that we're gonna talk about um, also incorporates some conversation about domestic violence. So both of these women are gonna share their stories about what happened at Amazon and how very different each relationship was handled, one resulting in a termination. So after they introduce our, themselves, I think we should start with Shai and then move on to um, what happened with our victim of domestic violence. But Shai, can uh, you first introduce yourself? What is your name? When did you start at Amazon? How long have you been there? and uh, what day you were fired. So let's start with your name and when you started at ALB1. Okay, my name is Cheyenne and I started at ALB1 August 2nd of 2023. And I got terminated um, February, March 29th. Uh, Shit. <laughs> on leap day. February it was it yeah. March first? Friday's March first. Yeah, March yeah 1st. it was it was approximately then. Um so we're gonna talk a little bit more about that. And then Vanessa, please go ahead and introduce yourself. How long have you been at ALB one? And you are still currently employed, but we're gonna talk about what happened. Yes, I'm still currently employed with Amazon. My name is Vanessa. I started with Amazon on Halloween two years ago. I just had my anniversary. Boo -boo. Hanging on by a thread. <laughs> okay, so we have Shy and Vanessa. So uh, we're going to circle back to Shy. Now, Shy, you said that you had started at Amazon ALB1 in August of yep. 2023, correct? Yes. So um, you started at ALB1 in what department? Pack. So you Outbound. were a packer? Yes. Okay, so you were a packer, which is how we met, right? Yes. When, when you were packing. So when you were at ALB1, we met, you were packing, and you and I got close. And I remember one time 
there was a learning trainer that was quote unquote warning people about me, um, which was another story for another time. And you had kind of come to my rescue and said, hey, this is going on. And you and I, from that point on, we're very close and kind of looked out for each other. Yeah, we just clicked. And we did. We definitely did. And shortly after we met, you had introduced me to another Amazon worker at ALB1, right? Yes. And you introduced her and I noticed there was a little something between you and her. And shortly after, you two were dating, right? Yes. Okay, so you and another girl from ALB1 had started dating. Um, yes. Approximately how long were you dating? How did it start? How did it go? Just a little bit of details about um, how. it. I met her September uh, 23rd, two days after my birthday. But I knew her and I chatted with her in the past on Facebook since 2019. Okay, so you had known each other, but then ran into each other at work. And, yeah, you know, I so noticed... basically we had each other on social media, but you know when you have someone on social media, but you never talk to them in person, or you never really have full-blown conversations with them? Mm-hmm. That's so how, how it did was. it start at, at Amazon? Because I noticed there seems to be a lot of romance at Amazon, um, and they yes, all it gets very... a lot worse than this, though. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about how did that romance blossom at ALB One um, after you realized you had been talking and now you're working together. So how did that blossom? Um, it kind of hit the fan quick. That's the that's the best way that I could put it. Like. It was fine when it was kind of, I guess you could say, a secret. Oh, boy. But when it got put out there, it got put out there. I and, see. Uh, working in a warehouse and having a, I guess you could say, intimate or any kind of relationship outside of a friend, it kind of will fall back on you in a negative way for the most part. That's just so from my experience. You mean specifically at Amazon? Because like I said, I there is a lot of romance at Amazon. I'm not sure how, but do you find that it gets complicated more so yeah. at of Amazon? Of course, I, because I believe that for me, like from experience, it's stressful and it's kind of impossible to work with somebody and still be yourself at the same time, who you're in a intimate relationship with. Okay. So how long after you started dating did you realize that things were not going according to planned and now you work together? Um, so at first, things were going pretty smooth because think about it. You have to think about it as in like a regular relationship, like an outside relationship. Things always go smooth at first. Mm -hmm. And then once they go left, it kind of it's hard to. So about how long with. after you started dating, did you realize, hey, we're working together and this isn't going well. Um, and it's starting so to I awkward. knew that it was going to be a problem when she started harassing me on the floor. At work. When I couldn't even walk down the green mile without hearing my name being screamed or. Mm -hmm. just... So I want to ask you about that um, because and just so that everybody knows that's listening what the green mile is. <laughs> the green mile is um, basically a lane throughout the building where associates can walk. Um, it's the main corridor, the main walkway. So now you said at work, she was yelling your name on the Green Mile? Yeah, like all you would hear is Shy or Cheyenne down the Green Mile. And she kind of like circling back to what you asked. Like, it, like I said, it was kind of impossible to work with somebody who I was on that level with because 
in my eyes, I don't feel as if like she separated that and work. It kind of like combined and it made it difficult for me to be able to okay. focus and do what I have to do, even though I still did what I had to do. Mm -hmm. She made it difficult. And, and she was a ma and she was a manager, right? Is that correct? No. no. She was oh, an oh, AA. Okay. Oh, okay. Interesting. <laughs> um, if you knew the dynamics, then you would know why we chuckle at that question. <laughs> um, <laughs> So, so now you guys are, now things are going south. So at, did you go to HR, go to your manager? Did you ask for a transfer to another department? So how did you handle that? Because like I said, there's a lot of romance at Amazon. So what happens when it goes south? And I want to get to how you got terminated. So now things um, are going south. So what do you do? Do you go to your manager? How, what do you do? Well, I actually, uh, when I, this is around the time where I was constantly picking up extra shifts. And I would ask, uh, who was it? Like, it got so bad to the point where Natalie, the OM, like, she, she kept, like, separating us. Like, she would not put us near each other, no matter how much she asked to like be by me Natalie would keep us separated because I would like tell them like you know like I can't do this like I'm just I'm getting stressed out it's too much it's just too much I can't mm -hmm. deal mm -hmm. with somebody calling my name gotcha. constantly and wanting me to like come to their station and then mm -hmm. I can't focus on my work at the same time so yeah Andy what are your thoughts on the Enter warehouse romance. I mean, do you see well, how this can escalate quickly? I, I definitely see how it can escalate. Um, I also think that it's an impossible issue for Amazon to deal with because of the hours that they <laughs> force their workers to, to work, in addition to the fact that most of the workers all live a significant distance. So between commuting, between taking care of your regular you know, life, life activities, laundry, eating, sleeping and everything else. How much time do you even really have to socialize, fraternize with anybody outside the warehouse? I mean, I, I can see Amazon potentially trying to put a policy of no fraternization in place, but for single employees, it's going to be virtually impossible. Uh, I would guess that there's probably, you know, cheating on marriages. There's all kinds of relationship stuff that's got to well, happen there. Go ahead. For me, I'm not married. <laughs> but people do get but, married there. <laughs> hey, be quiet. Cut it out. Why? But so <laughs> at the time, I was completely single. Mm -hmm. uh, so. Uh, sorry. Um. Okay. So you're single. You're dating. Things go awry. The manager says, hey, she tries to, you know, keep you guys separate as much as possible. So now, all of a sudden, you get an email. Am I right? Yep. And the thing is, I haven't worked with this female for since early December. She switched to nights. And mm -hmm. prior, before that, she was constantly taking VTO. She mm -hmm. switched to nights January 7th. Mm-hmm. So I, and I have not seen her since then. Mm -hmm. So you haven't seen her, but, you know, as is common in ending of relationships, sometimes somebody has something that belongs to the other one. So now what happens is uh, she allegedly owes you money. You want your yep. money. So why don't you tell us a little bit about, um, you're asking for the money, how that goes down, and then you, and then the email. So what? So, how does it start? Okay, so there was a night that she called me, mm -hmm. and we were talking, mm -hmm. and then after we got off the phone, I texted her and I asked her for the for my money that she owed me, mm -hmm. and she kept just saying she doesn't have it, she doesn't have it, she doesn't have it, and mm -hmm. then she would send me a little bit at a time. Mm -hmm. And then I finally said, okay, well, I just waited like a week and I asked her like, okay, so do you have the rest of my money now? And I never got a response back. Mm -hmm. 
And I thought like, okay, maybe like her phone was off, is off or something. Mm -hmm. And I never got a response back. Mm -hmm. So in February, I got an email saying that I was suspended. And it didn't cross my mind that that would be why I was suspended because like, you know, like probably over a month passed and it was, I was going to work and everything was fine. I haven't seen her. I didn't even ask her for my money again. Mm -hmm. And then I get an email saying that I'm suspended with no explanation, no nothing. So if I remember oh correct, yeah. So if I remember correctly, did you ever approach her at work and ask for your no. money? I did you ever seen text her. her while you were at work? No. So you never contacted her about owing you money while you were at work no i always knew not to do that because i just i always knew there was a possibility that she could try to make mm -hmm. something into something that it's not exactly so, so you tried to avoid the situation yeah so i tried to avoid a situation that ended up i still ended up getting the crappy end of the stick so just to clarify here you, like hundreds of thousands of other Amazon workers, had an Amazon romance. We'll call it an Amazon romance. Yep. It doesn't work out. You break up. She owes you money. You text her outside of work. You just want your money back. Yep. And did you ever make threats against her? Nope. All I asked and was for my money back. I actually can say that I read the text messages. And I can confirm that based on the text messages that I received, there were no threats. Nope. Not to mention, nothing happened at work. Nothing at all. Nope. nope. So you get the email. How long did it take for you to receive a phone call after the email? So they, I believe that I got a call on either, hmm, let me try to see if I can put up. So you receive the phone call and yeah. while you're looking up the date, if I remember correctly, they did an investigation and I believe you called me, you were shocked to find why they had suspended you. Now, yep. the thing so is, I got a call February 27th. And that was for the investigation. Yes. So how long did it take for you to receive a phone call after you were suddenly suspended without explanation? Uh, I got the phone call February 27th and then I got mm -hmm. fired February 29th. Okay, and what, what was the email again, the date? Uh, one second. I believe it so was you... So here's the thing. Oh, you? yeah, they called me five days later. Five days. Okay, After so five days, the you, they call you. Now, ultimately, you're fired, right? Yep. But what were you fired for? Uh, they said I uh, retaliation is against their policy, that she went to HR and said that I was harassing her, and that she was scared I was going to retaliate, and that's against her poli the policy. But Even what was the Warren retaliation? Even though Lauren stated that normally this couldn't be an HR case because people have to hash that out on their own, but yet they turn around two days later and fired me. So, right. So that's why we also have Vanessa here. Mm -hmm.